Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos. Now, in the NBA, trouble at sea for the Splash Brothers. Why do I say that? Kevin Durant out indefinitely with a sprained MCL, bone bruising the leg. KD, big dog, you got to stay healthy. Reevaluating them in four weeks, excuse me, reevaluating Kevin Durant in four weeks. I look at this entire situation with the Golden State Warriors. The big three, they have to return to prominence. Draymond, you got to hit threes now. Steph Curry, you got to be the step that you were last year, breaking three point records, hitting eight, nine, ten threes a game. You have to be that guy at this point because Kevin Durant, he's a great shooter, but you take him out of the framework, everybody's got to fall back into their old roles. But can they do it? I think Golden State can do it. Go, Draymond Green's played a very passive since KD's been on this team. He doesn't take as many three point shots. I mean, Draymond, didn't you go, didn't you hit seven threes in the final, in the game seven? I want to say, didn't, didn't you hit, I want to say in the first half you hit four or five threes in game seven of the finals. You can shoot that shot. Worry about playing basketball. Stop all the technical fouls. You're hurting Golden State. You're hurting the Warriors. So, Dub Nation, look forward to seeing this team be what we've all come to love, the true Warriors. Not the up and coming, not the, not the Warriors that might be superior. This is the true Warriors, the organic core Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond Green. And I look forward to seeing how they move around and how they feel being the same old guys. Yeah, they don't have Festus Cecilie. They don't have Andrew Bogut, but they still got the main core group of guys, okay? In other words, I look at the other side of the NBA, the Eastern Conference. Celtics beat the Cavs last night. That's an important game because it tells the Celtics that we can handle this team and we can take this team down when it matters. That game had a playoff feel to it last night. Did you did you sense that a little bit? It had it had a little bit of a a, a stern vibrato to this contest. Isaiah Thomas, 31 points, 10 for 20 on field goals, so he shot 50%. So we know that he has the wet ball. And nobody holds him in check were his own words. He said after the game, hey, nobody holds me in check. Nobody's going to keep me from impacting this game and helping my team win. And I respect the guy that's that confident to even make a comment about something like that after you just finished beating LeBron James. Yes, it was at home, but if the Celtics meet Cleveland in the playoffs and they play in a seven-game series and the Celtics win three home games and get one in Cleveland, the last time I checked, that adds up to four. So we'll have to see what they do. The Celtics don't need any backup singers. I said for a long time they needed they were one pick away. They needed one 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 more guy, one more piece. They need they were one loaf of bread short from feeding 5,000. But I think the Celtics have a legitimate shot of coming out of the East. Because yeah, Darren Williams looked great last night. But Isaiah Thomas looked a lot better. And the biggest threat to the Cavs right now are Boston and, of course, Washington. John Wall wants more commercials, and he's playing like it. Every time he sees anybody out there that's got some clap, he is going at them, clapping back. So, John Wall, keep doing what you're doing. Isaiah Thomas, keep doing what you're doing. Show everybody you guys aren't scared of LeBron James. Can you take down Goliath? We'll see this April and May in the playoffs. We just shall see. I don't know, but I think that we'll see some good basketball in the NBA. They thought it was going to be lopsided with, oh, it's a guaranteed Golden State versus Cleveland, but this ain't guaranteed. This is not guaranteed admission to this concert, okay? NCAA hoops last night, Northwestern and Chi-Town, y'all got to stand up this morning. Northwestern, if you all didn't know about their basketball team, they've never made the NCAA tournament. Now, that's hard to fathom considering you are in the Big Ten, and you can't get players good enough year in and year out in your entire school history to make one NCAA tournament. But hold on. Wait a second. This team, they beat Michigan last night on a last-second shot. And everybody wondered why would they do that. Because it could have went out of bounds. That long heave from the baseline could have went out of bounds. And then they don't win that game. And everybody's saying, oh, why don't you just go to overtime? You gave Michigan a shot with 1.7. They hit a three late. Michigan has a habit of hitting threes late in games. And they can do it. So that was a risky play, but they got it done. They get on. Now, hold on. Northwestern, they need to get out their penny loafers. They've never been dancing. They might go this year. And I look forward to seeing what they do in the tournament. They may not make it to the second round. They may not make it to the Sweet 16. But it's just the fact that they will probably go with the win that they got last night. So that's big for a school who needs recruits. They need to bring their program up. They want to be better than they've been the past 
past 50 years at this school in basketball. So them winning that game and having the potential to get into the tournament and to make it in will be big for the people of that area in Chi-Town who celebrate Northwestern. Mike Wilbon and Mike Greenberg, stand up. I know you guys are hyped. Those are two ESPN commentators that both went to Northwestern. I know they, they, they're they loving some Wildcat basketball right now, but they only care about the Kentucky Wildcats here in Kentucky. But that's another conversation. NFL news, they're cutting back on celebration penalties. They've had meetings the league office has about, is it a little bit excessive to penalize these players for celebrating and having exuberance about getting in the end zone? Now, the reason I think they've revisited this issue is because players have complained a loss of ratings and viewership, the NFL can't handle that. And also, allowing the players to celebrate and have more fun and bring people back to their television sets to watch Sunday football, don't you think it might detract attention from this, uh, the CTE stuff that in research that gets talked about uh, all the time about brain trauma and injuries in the sport of football? So why not make it fun to take people's minds off of the residual effects of taking a pounding in that sport? Why not make it more fun again? NFL, do something before you lose the sport and lose it all together. I would hate to see that. Football's the greatest game in the world. So save it by allowing these players to get the freak on a little bit. But two pumps, not three. <laughs> now, the Browns will maybe trade their number one pick. Did you all hear that? They should trade the number one pick. They don't know what to do with it. The times they've gotten the number one pick, they've gotten bums. Brandon Whedon, uh, I, I could name more bums. There's so many bums, I can't even think of the, the, the next best bum off of my, top of my head. But they've gotten quarterbacks and picks over and over at the first, number one pick, top five picks that they've just blown. So trade it away, get some value, somebody that you already know is good because somebody in the Browns front office is not very good at assessing talent, which speaks to why we've seen them have lackluster performances for decades. So, Cleveland, let's hope they trade that number one pick because they don't need it. They can't manage it. Give it, to, give it to New England. Get Jimmy G. Just say, Bill, I've got a number one pick for you for Jimmy G. Jimmy G is who we want. They may not give him to you, but you can get somebody. Come on now, guys. But, yeah, you might as well trade it. Don't know what to do with it. Also, Lions GM Bob Quinn came out. He seems condescending when he said comments um, yesterday, I want to say, about Joe Mixon and his absence from the combine not being fair. A lot of people took that the wrong way because, as we know, Joe Mixon was seen punching a woman in a bar, broke her jaw, and that happened, uh, I want to say, a couple years ago. Oklahoma allowed him to stay in school. He did miss a full year, but Dan, uh, excuse me, Bob Quinn, he seems to feel like, hey, it's, it's, he said comments saying that this isn't fair to the executives to have to run around and chase around to find information about this guy. But, Bob Quinn, you got to be careful about what you say because that domestic violence stuff, they take it serious nowadays in the NFL. And you can't just be willy-nilly spitting off stuff about how it's not fair for a guy who did something like that. But I'm not saying Joe, Mi Joe Mixon's the worst person in the world because there are people who have done worse who have played in the NFL. But... This was an issue, and NFL doesn't want this type of publicity surrounding the league. They've already had the incident with Ray Rice, Josh Brown, Greg Hardy. I could go on and on and on and on. Chad Johnson, headbutt. I mean, I could go on and on. So they don't need this type of attention. So no, he won't be there. So if you got to run around, the NFL the team, the, the entity that pays you. You guys get the money. They set the salary caps and everything. They're the ones who pay you. So it's not a disservice to you. They're the reason you have a job because there is a league. So quiet down, Bob Quinn. Talk to Joe Mixon when you can talk to Joe Mixon. But Joe Mixon, this opportunity, he gave it up because of decisions he made. But we've all made decisions that caused us to have to give up other opportunities. I know I have. Moving right along. So long, au revoir to Darrell Revis. Released by the Jets uh, the other day. I want to say it was Tuesday. Very sad. He was a shutdown corner. Is a shutdown corner. Um, he's a shell of what he once was. Revis Island is no more. Will he come back? Will he play another season? Or will he just call it quits after this? I honestly think he got let go. Let's not ignore the elephant in the room. If he doesn't get arrested for the fight in Pittsburgh, isn't he still with the Jets? So this is just an easy way to say, Darrell, we can't keep you here. We're going to go ahead and let you go. And it's sad, but like Drake always says, Business is business is strictly financial. So Darrell Revis, so long. Jets, you got to do what you got to do. Next show, we will be prepping for Selection Sunday. I have to shoot some juice out about teams that are on that bubble or teams that are in that bubble, teams that are out of that bubble. So we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. It's getting real close to this tournament. I love the smell of March madness. So hopefully it's mad and we enjoy what we see. Lonzo Ball Daddy's been running it. And 
Northwestern finally gets in, it's going to be a crazy tournament. But thank you for watching the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos.